Hi, everybody. I'm Swai Pham, fan subject editor at Autostraddle. I'm super excited today. I have the honor of interviewing two folks from the docuseries Trans and Trump Land. Um, we have the creator, Tony Zashawakatan, and one of the executive producers, Chella Mann, here with us. Thank you for chatting with me today. I'm super excited for this conversation. Um, I want to start off by kind of grounding us in some context, right? So it's not even been a month since the inauguration of the Biden-Harris administration. Trump hasn't even been out of office for a month yet. And, um, and so I know that there are certain folks who are going to see this film and be excited to watch it, but, but question what it looks like for trans people in Trump land when Trump is out of office. So um, what would you say to those people? Um, I think it's a it's a good question. So I, I'm very happy that Biden won. Um, and we're about a month away, as you mentioned. And I think too, um, what we're seeing is it's it's really okay for people that are still in these like liberal parts of the country, New York City, LA, for example. Um, but what I'm hearing from like the characters in trans and Trump land, and even just like friends that I have in red states, it's still difficult. And why is it difficult is they still have these lingering state policies. Um, for example, um, Ash in North Carolina, HB2, it's still not formally like it's, it's still a reality. Um, so he's dealing with that, the anti-trans bathroom bill. Also, we're seeing recently, I think it was Montana, is trying to pass a bill that bars um, young trans athletes from participating on the teams that align with their gender identity. And I think we're seeing kind of still this incredibly bad momentum in these red states where um, trans people are at, at this target, not a new target, but like still a very strong target. And um, I think it's very hard reality still for a lot of trans folks around the country, um, because yes, we can have um, a shift towards federal equality and inclusion, but what about the, the state level? It, that still is something that is, I think, going to be a strong uh, focus for trans rights in the next four years. So it's still really tough um, a month away uh, from the inauguration to be trans, I think, in, in, a, in a conservative state. That's so true. Um, in Montana and in South Dakota, there are bills currently to, uh, that are meant to increase surveillance of trans athletes. Um, and there are a couple other bills, including in Kansas, that are going to criminalize gender affirming care um, for trans youth as well. Um, so I'm curious for Chella, what made you feel like you needed to sign on to this film? What what really drew you to the message that this film was sending? Well, during this time, you know, when Trump was first elected, I could not even vote. I was 17 at the time. And he actually came to speak at my high school in conservative central Pennsylvania. And that was just earth shattering for me coming into my skin as a trans individual, queer individual, disabled individual, to see the kids that I grew up alongside for 17 years, just blindly walked by me while I protested outside of school. It just broke my heart. And I needed some kind of context, some kind of like solidified condensed information of everything that happened to trans people over this time. And Tony just, it was like this gift like from heaven, you know, like he put into, he put so much work into this. It's beautiful. The people that are highlighted are articulate, are diverse. And I believe like what they have to say is something that every, not only American who was under, you know, the Trump administration, just anyone should hear because it's just about human rights. It's just about being a, a, a person that cares about other people. And so, I mean, I wanted to sign on to this because it's in, it's imperative information, especially considering what we all just went through. What I'm um, really interested in is the fact that Tony, you are not only creating and um, you know running the show, but you are also in the film as a host and you're engaging with uh, all these folks from trans youth to two spirit folks um, all across the country. And I'm curious what motivated that decision for you to be a part of the storytelling as a trans person. I'm glad that you really uh, enjoyed this series, Swai, and that's great to hear. And I, uh, Chella too, saying it's beautiful. I'm like, Chella's a great artist. So hearing that as well, I'm like, yeah. Uh, Cause I wanted to like really capture people's like uh, heartstrings, like get attached to their heartstrings and be like, trans people are human. We're like your neighbors and stuff. Um, so like what motivated me in trans and Trump land to like 
direct it and also be part of it is um, I really like traveling and connecting with people. So I wanted to like be in front of the camera and like guide people. Um, Cause I thought to myself, like, how is everyone gonna be weaved together? Like these four characters that are very diverse. Um, they're like all around the country. I was like, you know, I talked to my producer, Jamie. I was like, should I just be the host and like connect everyone? And like it, you, the, the series follows me in like a red car across the country. And he was like, yeah, that's a good idea. Um, so I guess what motivated me was like that artistically, but also like on a personal level, I'm like, I'm a trans guy. I'm also first generation. My mom was from Greece. My dad's from Iran and I'm Iranian American. So Trump impacted me as a trans person, also as a first generation American and as Iranian American. So I was like, oh, I was like impacted by this a lot. So let me tell a little bit of my story throughout this um, journey in the series. So um, I felt like a really kind of like personal connection um, to the subject matter, which is like investigating what Trump has done to a lot of folks over the past four years. And just kind of like wanting also to meet the characters and like go into their homes and like see where they live and like meet their friends and meet their family. And I like really like connecting with people. So that like really um, got to me as like an artist. I was like, oh, I, I want to make it very personal and like show people that I had a hard journey with my family at first coming out. That's so beautiful. Thank you, Tony. Um, tell us what, how did you feel like you saw yourself in the film? In what ways did you see yourself reflected by the different stories that were told? Um, that's a great question. I mean, going back to the first also, you know, while Tony was talking, another thing that Another thing that I was thinking immediately when I got this email that it was about trans people in front of the camera and behind the camera. I was like, so period, because that's what we need. We need people not only in front of the camera, but behind the camera, like immediately. I was like, oh, great. This is not tokenization. This is like real shit. This is the stuff that actually matters. They're going to talk about things not on surface level. We're actually going to go in deep here. So I already knew it was beautiful before I saw it. I mean, so many different, I, you know, I think what initially struck me was Ash and how young they were, because going back, you know, I felt the same way, like the way they were discovering how hard and harsh the world can be as a really young person to see the world support a person like Trump and all that he stands for was a lot to swallow. So to see that, I felt I felt very seen. And then not only that, I feel so grateful and lucky because of, you know, Ash has a really great relationship with their, their mom and I do as well. And to see that represented, I immediately actually sent it to my mom and I was like, look, this is, this, this is like us. And that's rare, you know, for someone like me, I, it's not often I can send something to someone and be like, look, I, that's me that I feel represented. So immediately that was episode one. And um, yeah, I was just sold. I felt just like Tony, even though I wasn't even in it, I felt a deep personal connection as well. Yeah, I love that the film presents trans people, not just based off of our gender identity. It's, it's about all of us because we're so much more than our gender expression. Um, and I think that that was really important to show um, I, it also feels like a lot of times trans people are having to plead to cis people, especially cis people in positions of power, um, in government and institutions in order to maintain our rights um, and our dignity. And so in this case, who would you say the audience of the film is, Chella? Who are you, who would you say that the film is trying to speak to? I would hope this film speaks to everyone because I mean, everyone has something to learn. Like trans individuals, this is just, Taking a step back, I mean, this is more a film about anyone who faces oppression or adversity. I, I, yes, um, sorry, I stumbled on my words. But um, it's all about how to stay strong, stay true to yourself, especially when, like you said, the people in power, you do not in any way identify with. How to stay strong and how to build community and a support system under that, that will allow you to persevere despite what the world looks like around you. And I think that that is a story that could help not just trans people, but anyone. I mean, so many people have something to learn from this. Any, anyone that goes through any hardship in their life, which is 
I would say all individuals in the entire world can learn something from the resilience of trans people. When I was um, developing the series, I was like, who is my target audience? Um, who do I want to speak to? And I knew that like trans and queer people would be able to feel connected to the characters and the underlying like civil rights issues and whatnot. Um, but I thought to myself, like, I don't I want everyone to feel like they can relate to the series and the issues discussed. And I, I want to say ditto to what Chella said. Like, I think the target audience um, is like, is everyone in a sense, because it explores um, themes of like not fitting in high school, uh, bullying, um, feeling uh, racism. And I think a lot of folks can uh, relate to that, all kinds of, of people, Americans or even people abroad. And so I think it's like the target audience is like, is everyone, because it's very heartwarming stories. And uh, there's also this big underlying theme of motherhood that really connected everyone. And so I think like, who doesn't like cool moms? <laughs> um, so yeah. I think like everyone can um, get something from from the series and I, I hope that especially people that may be more moderate or conservative will watch it too and learn something from it. I love that this is coming out now because there's also um, there's been a lot of discussion recently about trans representation especially since uh, the release of another documentary style film Disclosure um, by Sam Fetter and executive produced by Laverne Cox who we love um, and so I'm curious for, for the both of you, witnessing the way that trans people have become, begun to take more ownership of our stories in cinema, in TV, and uh, not just producing fictional works, but producing documentaries that, uh, that actually analyze the ways that we've been portrayed and, and proactively seeks to change the ways that we've been portrayed. How are you feeling about the state of trans representation today? Disclosure really went in and analyzed like how we were portrayed in the past, how we are presently. And I think um, it's kind of interesting to uh, even just like bring it back to like these um, anti-trans state bills that are coming through. It's like the double-edged sword, I guess I would say like increased trans visibility can also lead to increased like discrimination because um, the more we're coming out and asking for our rights and uh, owning our power, um, the more people are like attacking us. Um, and so I think that's like interesting and I'm not gonna say like that's happening in every state or everywhere. There's also, you know, a positive incline towards trans rights. But I think like there is a big shift happening with um, like kind of what Chella said earlier where there are more trans people directing and producing things behind the camera. I think that's powerful because in the past uh, we were more um, objects in front of the camera to be analyzed. And so now when you can have trans folks telling their story in front of the camera, behind the camera, that's incredibly powerful. And I think where we're at is I do want to say, I think there can be more trans masculine and non-binary representations to be, to be quite frank. Um, I think we need more of that. And also trans people who are uh, diverse, maybe trans people who are uh, deaf, maybe trans people like for me, I don't see any Middle Eastern trans people. I'm like, where are you guys at? Um, so I would like to see more diversity in the trans voices, less white trans people. And also just like trans people in everyday roles, like trans joy, uh, not getting murdered. Um, falling in love and getting married but then you know like not getting broken up with because we're trans so that's what i would say is like we've gotten to a good point but we need we need more representation still and i agree with everything that tony said um we are taking steps forward but we are also taking steps back and i think that you know i often say if i were born in any, any other time period i wouldn't be where i am today i'm just so grateful to be on this surge of like social media and technology, technological revolution. Because if it were not for my social media accounts, I wouldn't be able to be my own representation in the same way. Like, of course I could always look in the mirror and be like, you know, I know who I am, period. But I can broadcast that. And that changes everything. It brings people together. And I don't have to wait for someone to like put my face on a billboard or like, on a whatever, give me a platform. I was like, no, you know what? I'm just gonna speak my truth. And I know, I know there's people out there who feel exactly the same way. And of course, lo and behold, everyone's on a continuum and everyone suffers because of binaries, like not just gender binaries, but like disability binaries and stereotypes and stigmas. And so it hurts everyone. So if you just build a platform where you're authentic and you're just like, guys, this shit sucks. What, what are we 
doing. Like, let's just, let's have some space where we validate people who are on the continuum, who exist outside of stereotypes. So many people feel that and are hurt by that and want to be free from that. And I think that this is, you know, this is the time. This is absolutely the time. Um, I also wanted to ask, so in the past two weeks, there has been an ongoing, um, an onslaught of anti-Asian violence, um, especially against Asian American elders. Even in New York, there was a Filipino man who was uh, slashed across the face on the subway while he was on the first, while he was on the way to one of his two jobs. And then there have also been, there's also been reported violence in the Bay as well. And that's only the violence that's been reported and documented, right? Um, and so, you know, in the last calendar year, we've witnessed people become more and more invested in racial justice, especially invested in ending anti-Blackness. How is this film connected to the uprisings for Black lives, um, the fights for Asian Americans, um, just racial justice in general? How would you connect this film with those causes? For this film, I mean, I think I would go back to the people that Tony and Jamie chose to up with. I truly believe in collective liberation and I believe they chose people who face multiple cycles of oppression on a daily basis. And by uplifting those individuals, you know, we all benefit and we are all more empathetic and understanding of what people go through. So I think it's just a matter of choosing marginalized people who are at various intersections of oppression and fully allowing them to tell their stories unfiltered without tokenization. And that's what I, that's what I truly admired about, about this docu-series is who was casted, who, who's being uplifted. And of course, like the benefits of that, we will all benefit from that. Uh, to go to what Chala said, um, it really saddens me to um, see like the wave of anti-Asian um, violence. I actually had a friend recently, she's uh, queer, and we went to college together and she's Chinese and she was actually had a guy come to her face in Queens and he was like yelling at her and she posted about it on social media and I was just like, are you fucking kidding me? And we used to be roommates and she would tell me um, just about like what she would experience daily in New York City in Queens. Um, so I was really upset about that. And I think like Trump for the past four years has not only exacerbated transphobia, but also racism everything every ism every phobia and um when i was like thinking about kind of creating the series i was like how can i also um kind of like highlight people who face double oppression um so whether that be immigration status um you know i want to say ageism too with ash or uh, racism like with yvonne who's a black trans from mississippi that we um filmed um how can i kind of like tap into these waves of anti-Blackness, anti-Asian sentiment, anti-immigration sentiment of the past four years and now, because um, that hasn't gone away with Trump getting out of office. So I want to kind of, um, uh, what do you call it, uh, connect back to what Chella said, which is that I made sure to choose characters that aren't just trans, but also face other isms and other levels of injustice. And I also, for me personally, as a documentary filmmaker, I wanted to be a passive host because I have privilege in the sense that I'm coming from New York City, traveling to conservative states, so I have legal privileges. And also I'm a mixed trans guy, so I can have white privilege. So I was like, I wanna be a passive host in the series and not take away from people's voices in these states who um, you know, uh, are black, are Latina, uh, are facing potential deportation um, because that's an incredible um, difference in privilege that I had. So I wanted to make sure I gave everyone proper time. And I think that's storytelling is the way that I'm kind of like highlighting these multiple injustices in the series. What I, um, what I also love about what you did, Tony, was that even though this, the film is about the present and it is a, um, it's a nonfiction account of the present. It also feels like it a capsule of what could be possible in the future, especially when you were speaking to the person who is two spirit and is still preserving all of their heritage and the traditions that they come from. Um, and I, it makes me think what the future of trans people could look like 
in the US and also elsewhere. So I think a lot of times we're all caught up responding to the types of violence we face and trying to solve those issues. And I think it distracts from us being able to envision what, what, what kind of world do we want to inherit. Um, and I think it's intentional that we are kept from that. So for the two of you, what would you say in about 50 years and half a century in around 2071, how would you want trans people living? Freely, Either no restrictions as they are. I just want them to fucking tell their truth and like hopefully the gender binary doesn't exist or at very least is like less strong than it is now. I just, I want people to not be afraid to be themselves. I don't want colors to have gender. I don't want smells to have gender. What the actual fuck? I, I just like, I just want people to be able to be people. Like stop, stop with the, stop with the categories. That's that's what I would have to say. But 50 years, I, I, that's a, that's a long time. 50 years, like the gender binary should like just not exist. Like, cause for me, even though like I'm a binary trans guy, like when I was filming in North Carolina and met Ash, I was like, Ash came out at uh, 12 as like trans mass, but now is like maybe more binary, non-binary. And then like meeting his friends who are Gen Z, I'm like, y'all are really woke, right? And they don't even like believe in gender categories. And I was just like, I'm like sitting around and here's like this young trans mask youth with like cis male and cis female friends. And they're like talking about all of these issues and they're like on TikTok and whatever kids are doing these days. I'm like, wow, like yeah, 50 years, I do feel like the gender binary won't exist. We won't have these like gendered parties. And also just like legally and politically like it should not be even a discussion do trans rights exist or not or do trans people exist or not in this country like we should not be having that conversation even even now that's what I would hope 